the 4100 and 4150 vibrating wire strain gauges from Geocon are designed for measuring strains on structural steel members such as bridges, piles, tunnel linings, and buildings. The 4100 series features a removable coil assembly. The 4150 series gauges have an integral coil assembly. The standard mode of attachment is by spot welding. John McRae of Geocon will demonstrate and explain a typical installation. The surface of the steel member should be flat and clean, free from rust, grease, and pitting. Degrease the surface using an appropriate cleaning agent, then use a power grinder or sander, file, wire brush, or sandpaper to achieve a flat, smooth surface. Today's subject uh, is the Model 4150 Vibrating Wire Strain Gauge. This gauge is designed to be spot welded to steel structures, so we're going to demonstrate this here with this piece of steel here. So the first thing to do is set the gauge at the proper position in its range, and our nominal mid-range position is 2500 microstrain. So I've got this connected to the readout through this cable and clip leads, and I'll turn this readout on. The gauge is read in position E, so you set, the, set that up for position E, and the nominal 2500 is, uh, this is off by 250 microstrains. So the way to set that is this little nut on the gauge right here controls the tension in this spring, so there's a little bit too much tension, so I'm going to set it back a little bit just by loosening the nut a small amount and we can watch the readout as we do it. So turn it back a bit. Watch the reading. This didn't change very much there. That's twenty six hundred. Twenty five fifty. So twenty five fifty is pretty much perfect, but I'll go back just a little bit more. There's 2529. So that's the mid-range position. So my next task is to mark the structure along the alignment that we're going to set the gauge at, just so I'll keep it on a straight line on the axis. So I use the Sharpie and a straight edge. There's my position line. So now I put the gauge on that in the position that's required for the measurement. I use this little gadget with a V in it to hold the gauge in position. There we go. So you align the center dot on the end flange with the line on both ends. And now we're ready for the spot welding. So I take the welder which is right here, go to the spot that I want to start. I want to start on the center dot, and there's a weld, and then I'm going to do this back row while I hold the thing firmly in place. Following the back row, I just do the two side rows, so there's fair number of dots here. Try to keep it on the dot. If you miss the dot a little bit, don't worry about it. The welder is trigger operated, so you, the idea is to put a fair amount of pressure before you pull the trigger, because if you don't, you can get a surprise explosion. Not really an explosion, but a pop that will put a hole in the, in the tab. Okay, so when you finish one end, you've got to reposition every yourself to get at the other end. It's a bit tricky, but start at the back, same as before, do the back row. Then the two side rows. And if you miss the dot, don't worry too much about it. And don't be shy if you want to put a few more spots on. It can't hurt anything. So 
now we've finished the primary spot wells. The next step is to, well, the readout's gone out. We'll check the reading. 2686. So it went up a little bit during the operation, but it's perfect. It's right in the mid-range of the gauge. So the next step is to apply these things. They're called uh, collar shims, and it's a very important part of this operation. So it's very simple. You put the shim down in the corner, align the end of it with the end of the end block, and push it in tight to the gauge and spot weld it one, two, three, and then three more out here. The next step is to fold this over the end block nice and smooth and tightly. Push it in. Use the spot welder tip to push it in tight to the other side, holding it down with a fair amount of force. Spot again. Then a row of three, a row of three outside. and you're done. And then you have to put the other one on. Same sequence. You'll notice that the reading probably changes a little bit when you do these things because you're putting big forces on the gauge to, to, to permanently hold it into place. It's very important to put these on and get them nice and tight. So line up the shim on the other end, if I can. Fold it over, push it in tight, spot to center, one, two, three, four, five, six. Lastly, a, a row of three dots on the top, top center if you can. It slips too because it's a smooth round surface. Two, three, that takes care of the gauge. The next operation is the cover. It's a very simple operation. Bring the cable. I, what I like to do is keep this cable under the cover. So I bring this cover over here with the cable just going into it. Rather than have that, we like to have that inside there. So you sort of align that. We have another strip of spot weldable material right here. This comes with the, in a kit with the gauge. So we spot that there, just temp one spot on each side to get it started. And then a couple more spots out here, just like the gauge, only this is not as critical as the gauge collar shim. The collar shim is very important. Another one on the other end. Push it in tight.
then a few on the strap to the to the cover just to freeze that in place Okay, so that takes care of the cover. Now there's one more thing to do. When you run these cables, you do not want to put any tension on that finer bit of cable that connects to the excitation assembly. So what you can do is take a piece of this strip. This is supplied with the gauges. We'll just use two here, but you can use as many as you like. And use them just to put some tension on this cable. Now you can't spot weld to the cable obviously, but this works really well holding the cable in position. Use the same technique, just wrap it around the cable, tuck it in tight, and you get a nice neat hold down device. You could put two or three probably near the gauge and then You can put a lot of tension on that. Nothing happens to the cable. So that's it. There is one other thing that you can do with these if you like. The ends of these tubes are open, but you can use RTV compound to fill it up if you want to keep dust and dirt out of there. Normally, this is sufficient to stop any banging on the gauge. This is the model 4100. It's basically the same gauge, except it has a different, uh, a different method of doing the excitation. This this is the excitation coil, so it also forms a cover. So in this case, you would spot weld the gauge down in the exact same fashion using the collar shims, and then apply this. And it has these preformed shims, so you spot weld them in the same fashion that you would spot that, and there's two for each one. One thing that's nice about this gauge is it's is the coil assembly also makes the cover. For more information regarding the 4100 and 4150 strain gauges, as well as our other geotechnical and structural instrumentation products, contact Geocon, the world leader in vibrating wire technology.